Hello, fellow Rosarians. Thank you for joining me today for another video. This is exciting. And normally when I say that, and I'm talking about maintenance, I'm being facetious, and I'm kind of pulling your leg a little bit, but I'm serious. I really enjoy this part of it because it's gonna pay off huge dividends. Today, we're gonna to talk about fertilizing your roses. Before you fertilize, what should you have already accomplished by now? Uh, you're gonna put your roses in the ground, and I've done some videos on that. And when I put my roses in the ground, you'll see that I don't do anything other than biotone, and maybe I'll go ahead and throw some gypsum in the hole. And that's because my philosophy, and everybody's philosophy is gonna be different. So I can only share with you what I have found to be a good practice. So my philosophy for those bare root roses when they come is not to stress them out. If you think about those roses taking a journey for 10 days or so to get to you, they've been boxed up and then they're in travel, they don't have water, they don't have nutrients, they don't have light, and I just think that that must be a little bit of a stressful situation, even though they're asleep, they're supposed to be dormant. I don't want to stress out that rose because I think of me as a human, if I was in a situation where I was traveling for days on end without water, nutrients, light, I don't want somebody to throw a Red Bull at me as soon as I get to my destination and say, let's go have fun. Um, so I try to have that same philosophy with my roses that once they're done getting to me, I want to acclimate them to my soil as gently as possible, give them that biotone, which is a root stimulator. I'm gonna put that gypsum in, in the places that it needs it, where I have more clay and heavy soil. Otherwise, you know, I just am doing the biotone only. So I'm gonna give them about six weeks in the ground, which is where we are now. And once they wake up, then I'm ready to go ahead and give them a little bit of an extra push and give them some fertilizer. So the roses are now leafing out and I know that it's time for them to get their little kick of fertilizer. And so what I've got here is, of course, rose tone. I try to um, garden organically when I can and I've mentioned that to you that we're on the river and so I have to be careful about any chemicals that I use. So I use organic when I can. And so I'm gonna use the rose tone and I'm going to use um, the menorah. And roses really do like menorah, but that's a one time per season thing. And it's interesting because when I read the documentation, it says to put it in in the fall. I've never done that. So, you know, let's see how things go this season. I might readjust and correct, and that's the great thing about gardening is you keep on learning as you're going, but I put down manure as a top dressing right before I put my mulch in, in the spring. I'm gonna put down a quarter of an inch of manure around the roses, and I'm going to put a cup of rose tone. If you read the label, it says use, I think a cup and a quarter or a cup and three quarters. But when you've got 350 roses, you need to make little cuts where you can. And my, ha my roses are happy just getting a cup of rose tone. And so you're gonna do that once a month. So a lot of gardeners will say that they don't wanna use the same fertilizer every month. So every four to six weeks, you need to be topping off your fertilizer so that you can keep your roses happy and blooming. And so I don't typically use rose tone every month unless I get into some kind of a crunch and I have to use rose tone. And if that happens to you, your roses are gonna be fine. But if you wanna spice things up a little bit, uh, you do rose tone the first month and then do something alternating the second month. And so I've pulled out my other option that I use, which is the fish emulsion. And that is a liquid. I don't do it as a foliar. I think you can, and that's where you mix it together and then spray it on the leaves themselves. For me, I just can't get past my, my thought process. I don't want any water on the leaves. I don't want anything on the leaves unless I'm really specifically treating something on the leaves. And honestly, I'd rather defoliate the thing if there's an issue. So I keep everything in the ground, whether it's my, my granules for the rose tone or my liquid for the uh, fish emulsion. Uh, I go by the directions. You're gonna do three tablespoons for the fish emulsion per gallon. And I've put together a, um, a spreadsheet, which was kind of scary looking at the numbers, to give you an idea of what it's gonna cost if you have roses to be able to, to do this fertilizer program. So, you know, for the black manure, 
One bag is one cubic foot. One cubic foot will treat approximately 10 roses. That breaks out to 52 cents per rose. Now you're gonna do that only once per season, so you can calculate that in. And then when you get to your rose tome, that's by a spoma, that is going to be about $20 per bag. And hey, just as a note, if you go to Amazon, I always think that Amazon is cheaper and faster. Not true with the rose tone. Check out your local garden center because I think Amazon wanted $40 for an 18 pound bag, whereas my garden center wants $19.99. So see if you can get it locally and that'll be less expensive. So anyways, the breakout for the rose tone for an 18 pound bag is that it'll treat approximately 36 roses. So that would be 55 cents per rose per month because you're going to treat once a month. Now if you decide to alternate it up like I was talking about on alternating months you're going to use the uh, fish fertilizer. One gallon will treat 85 roses which breaks out to 36 cents. If you're looking at that and you say well gosh it's cheaper to do the fish emulsion I'm just going to use that every month. Well, if you look at that NPK rating, and first number would be telling you for that nitrogen that that is gonna green up the leaves. And so like if, you have, if you're looking at grass products, their only purpose is not blooming, it's nitrogen. So that first number, that nitrogen number is gonna be much higher. Now if we're looking at roses, we want to have an equal distribution for those numbers as close as possible and they're going to be like um so say for the rose tone that's going to be a four three two four percent nitrogen three percent phosphorus and two percent potash and so the potash would be what is giving it its ability to be able to fight off drought and and insects so i talked about nitrogen nitrogen is going to be greening up those leaves and then your second number there for the phosphorus that is going to give you your blooms and that percentage that's going to affect your blooms. so you've got those three numbers that you're looking at if you look at one of the products that say bayer and it's specifically for um, insect protection you're going to find that that last number is going to be much higher because its goal is not to necessarily green up and bloom its whole focus really is to try to uh, take care of your insect problem. So anyways, that just gives you a general overview of looking at that NPK number. Cow manure is a 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Very easy, very slow, very low numbers, but it's gonna be a long release that you can use through the season. So manure is great. And I'm sure you have one more thought, so I wanna go ahead and preempt that. And I've been in that situation before where I'm like, hey, once a month, if I can afford to fertilize more often than once a month, why not? Let's do it every other week and see what kind of blooms I can get. They're gonna be amazing. Well, guess what? I've been there, I've done that. And what happens is you'll get no blooms or very little compared to if you were only giving it to it four to six weeks. I'm not sure the rationale behind it, but I can tell you for two seasons, I was trying to understand, gosh, you know, I'm fertilizing every other week why do I not have these blooms? And I think I was just totally stressing out the rose that it was, you know, I had a lot of leaves, but I didn't have the, uh, the blooms that I wanted. So I'll caution you to try to really keep it at every four to six weeks for your fertilizer program. We'll go ahead and time lapse and I'll take you around the yard and I'm gonna go ahead and fertilize all the roses. I'm gonna put down a quarter of an inch of manure and I'm going to put down one cup of rose tone on every rose. I'll do the uh, fish emulsion next month. So we'll do the rose tone this month. I'm gonna take the rose tone and I'm going to scrape it into the manure, of course, wearing gloves. And then that will sit there until we get our uh, mulch next week. And then I will mulch all the beds. And after we get the mulch in, that is when it's time to just sit back and relax and enjoy the flush of blooms over the next month. So I'm really looking forward to getting done today and then getting the mulch in next week. And I'll be sure to share that with you. So ideally, you want to do this before it rains. We're expecting rain tonight. Look for a day when it's gonna rain and right before the rain starts, go ahead, as long as it's not gonna be a huge downpour that's gonna wash away. But if it's a gentle rain, it's a perfect time to go ahead and put down your manure and your fertilizer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the yard and take you with me on a time lapse. Uh, we'll see how long it takes me and I'm gonna put down manure on each rose and then I'm going to put rose tone around the drip line. And you might be saying, what is the drip line on a rose? 
The drip line is if you imagine the canes that are coming out of the ground, where it stretches out to and the rain drips off of that rose, that's the drip line. And so it's just a circle around wherever the widest part of those canes are, where it would drip down to the soil. Easy stuff. And if you don't get it perfect, it's okay. The rose is still gonna be happy uh, with the fertilizer that you give it. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm back. I tried to finish last night and my body just said, you're done. I got about 250 roses into it and my back just totally gave out. So I've taken a break, taken some medicine and I'm back the next day. I think it took me about an hour and a half to get through the work that I did yesterday. So hopefully this will go pretty quick to finish it up. But what I wanted to share with you that I haven't touched on is you're going to see, as you research online, lots of different recommendations for how to fertilize your roses. And why is that? Because everybody has a different zone, a different soil type, and so they're all trying different things. But if you're a newbie 
and a new rose geek and you're trying to figure out your roses, this is a tried and true. Manure has been used forever. And then rose tone is just a standard in fertilization. So if you're just starting with that, you can add on to it as you learn your different soil types and what your rose is like. So I hope that this video was helpful, that you'll like and you'll subscribe. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish up these roses and I'll see you in the next one.